Good morning, everybody. Legend of Molly coming at you from Six Flags Over Georgia. We've been to Six Flags Over Georgia a lot. In this video, we're just going to take a, a walk around the park, full park walkthrough, showing you off all the rides, the restaurants, and all that kind of thing. Starting here in the park's Main Street area, and I, I was kind of bummed because they, re they replaced their uh, like their coaster and ride stuff. They normally had all Six Flags stuff. Now it's a coaster candy store that sells nothing but candy. It's better for the kids. It's better for the kids, yeah. And they probably, I mean, they know what they sell. Uh, the Looney Tunes store sells all like Looney Tunes stuff. It's actually really well themed inside. Also a lot of superhero stuff in there. And then their Main Street area, it's, it's short but it's well done. If you want some uh, miserable Six Flags pizza, go over to Primo's. <laughs> Then you've got this uh, kind of neat thing where it's uh, you got a fountain. I imagine at one point this was probably a show location, wasn't it, was, it Molly? It yeah. Was, yeah. Like they would do kind of like a, their welcome show. Uh, now it's like. Yeah. Now it just sort of shows Six Flags over the history. And when you come in, you can go right or left. We're going to go right. A couple other things in this area of the park if you want to buy a souvenir cup, which I highly recommend. And this is actually one of the better Six Flags cups for souvenir cups in that there's normally not too long of a line to refill. There's a couple like Coke freestyle machine areas. We'll point them out as we walk by. So it's one of the better ones. Some of the Six Flags you go to, you have to wait a really long time to get your cup refilled. Not here. If you're into Simply Southern merchandise, go check out Coastal Gifts. Now, very important, Flash Pass. This is their upcharge pay to cut the line system. And uh, if you bought one online, come in here, or if you want to buy one, come in here. It is expensive, but it can turn those, uh, the days that will be way too crowded into, you know, a fun day instead of a miserable day. I always recommend uh, not buying it in advance. See yeah, what the time. wait till you get here. Yeah. I always say like, wait till an hour in. See where you're at an hour in and then go for it. All right, so the new ride for 2018 is Twisted Cyclone. They took the old Georgia Cyclone and they gave it the old RMC, the Rocky Mountain treatment, replaced all the wood track with steel track and made it crazy. So it now it goes upside down, I think three times. And it, it, it's a really, really fun ride. It has really bad dispatches though. Yeah, their, their dispatch times are not good. Normally the RMCs, they don't, they don't dispatch as well. And operations here at Six Flags is not as good as like, you know, a, a Cedar Point or some of the other places that you might find an RMC. But the ride itself, it's really fun. It's a huge improvement over the old Georgia Cyclone. It is about half the ride time now. It is, yeah. They definitely cut the ride time in uh, considerably. It uh, definitely feels like one of the shorter RMCs. I would say uh, it, it feels about as short as Wonder Woman. I rode Wonder Woman out in uh, Fiesta, Texas last month, and it felt just about as short as that. And I think the Wonder Woman actually has a shorter track length. Now, the ride itself is super fun. It's a big, steep first drop. You've got this crazy kind of like take on a cobra roll element there. You've got a couple of great moments of airtime, and I'm gonna run ahead and see if I can get some footage of this thing. As we cross under a bridge, this bridge is just used for like in-park road service and that kind of thing. So let's see if we can run up the hill. There we go, we're gonna get this thing in motion a little bit. Big first drop, big steep first drop. Then it goes in this crazy loop, turn, loop element. And then one of the best moments is this crazy wave turn. And then a whole bunch of the ride you can't see. Also, one thing I like about Six Flags Over Georgia, they have a history of opening up their rides early. Like a couple of the park opens at 10.30. But they normally open Twisted Cyclone and the Georgia Scorcher a half an hour early. So pro tip, get to the park at 10 o'clock. Not the scheduled opening time at 10.30. Like, uh, we rode uh, Twisted Cyclone twice before the park even officially opened. Acrophobia is the park's drop tower, 200 feet tall, sits on a hill. Also has weird, like, somewhat standing up seats. You kind of tilt. Yeah, you tilt a little bit. Um, it's kind of an unnerving drop tower. You're not, you're much more uh, in, a, in a vulnerable position than you are on most drop towers. So I like it. It uh, definitely is a ride that makes you yell. I mean, drop towers are always kind of like that. You just spin. You spin so you get a great uh, 360 view of the park. And then my favorite Easter egg for Agrophobia is these, in the queue they've got all these taller than signs. And my favorite one, Agrophobia is taller than the 1990 version of Godzilla starring Matthew Broderick. That's always uh, one of my favorite little nugget kind of things. Now over here is the park's train station. One of two train stations in the park. Uh, the train is not running today. 
I believe earlier this year the train caught on fire and I think it may have been down since. <laughs> It was during the week of fires. It was during the week of fires. There were a rash of theme park fires. And uh, it, it's a kind of a nice park because half of it has like really good shade. Some of it, there's almost no shade. Now this is a useful souvenir box. Yeah, this is um, like kind of a snack stand. You can get some bottled beers in here and it's air conditioned, so that's good. And then it's like, it becomes during haunt, it's like a bar, like a full service, nice bar where you can get good cocktails. But not during the rest of the year. It is a beer jail, though. The weird thing is, they they won like a permit that says, okay, we don't have to have beer jail anymore, but they still have beer jail. Yep. Uh, I do love this. They've got a, a plaque over here dedicated to the memory of Angus Wayne, who was uh, the founder of Six Flags Over Georgia. So I, I like when the parks, you know, they, they have some nods to their history. Over here is the park's mine train roller coaster, the the Dalanega or Dalanega mine train. Dalanega, I say this every time. Wait, it is a very confusing word. It Molly. is not. It is, yes, it is. No, Do you know what's not. not a confusing word? Twisted cyclone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, traditional old uh, mine train roller coaster, pretty fun. Yeah, good ride for kids. Like as far as like, there's not a lot of great rides in this park for kids to go on. But that, that's one, definitely one of them. Up here is uh, the entrance to the park's sky buckets. Which, uh, not the best sky bucket ride. It doesn't take you all that far. But, uh... I, this used to be my home park, and I think I've been on there, like, twice. Because it's pointless. It yeah, it really doesn't take far. you that far. I mean, and it's also, like, it's and not... And it long lines, too. I yeah, think. and it's not like you get a really cool view of anything, either. Now, we were talking earlier about places to fill up that, that Coca-Cola cup. And this is one of the good ones. Dead ahead of us right there is the Coca-Cola store, which shows uh, Coca-Cola merchandise as we are in Atlanta. If you want a vintage photo, it's over here. So if you want Coke merchandise, you can go over there. But also in the Coke area is a couple of freestyle machines where you could go and refill your bottle with, without having to wait in like a food line or something like that. Here we get to a big giant area where there's nothing going on. But earlier in the day, there was a character dance party. And boy, did I feel bad for those characters, because man, it's a million degrees here in Atlanta, and they're out here dancing in the hot sun with no shade. And during the Halloween event, don't they do like the yeah, hanging? No, this is where they no. do the awakening. Awakening. Yes, the hanging is of course at Knott's Berry Farm on the other side of the country. Um, <laughs> Crystal Pistol is their big indoor show theater. This season they're doing a show called uh, Rhythm and Grooves. Uh, not the best indoor show area, but it's also not terrible. A uh, quick shot over here, we're not going to walk over by it, but that is a bar, and it's like the park's big bar. You could get a cocktail there. They actually have a really nice draft beer selection. You could get like Sweetwater 420 on draft. You could get Hop Secutioner on draft. You could get a couple beers I've never even heard of on draft, and that's generally a sign of a good bar. There's like eight or ten yeah, uh, yeah. draft beers. I mean, this is Six Flags, so that draft beer is going to set you back probably 10, 11 bucks. Also, the bar is not air conditioning. It's like an outside patio, but it also has like a whole bunch of different games on. I'm going to take a quick walk now through Bugs Bunny Boomtown, which is the park's kids area. This got uh, redone a couple of years ago. Uh, Molly, do you remember what it was before uh, Bugs Bunny Boomtown? It was a... Uh, it had kind of a Spanish theme. I don't remember yeah, the name. Yeah, uh, Speedy Gonzales something. I, I don't, I don't, I don't quite know. remember, but... I don't but, uh, remember either. It does have a lot of remnants of that old kids area. Like, they, when they redid it, they kind of, like, half redid it. I feel like there's a lot of empty space. Too. There is. Um, and also, it's now the only kids' area in the park. So while you go to some of the other Six Flags parks and there might be a two or three kids' areas, if you have little ones, this is really kind of the only location. Well, I, I guess it sort of attaches itself to the, uh, the, Just, the Super Friends Justice League area, which is pretty much the same kind of idea, but that's a little bit more family rides. Like, I would not go on any of the rides here in Bugs Bunny Land except for maybe two of them. There you can see part of the Dodonica train. Yes, uh, it's hard to get a good shot of that, but it's yeah, kind of in the back of the park. They do have some cool rides here in the uh, Bugs Bunny Boomtown. They got a great convoy ride. Then they got this thing where the kids, it spins around and they get to shoot each other with water guns. Seeing as I get in the loop the camera, I do not want to be anywhere near this ride when it actually uh, goes on. You got a cute Speedy Gonzalez boat ride. And then my favorite ride over here in the uh, this section of the park is over here, Bugs Bunny's High Sea Adventure, which is the ride I would go on. That, that's a, a more acceptable ride for adults, where you just go over here and you ride in these uh, 
little, a little like, I guess it's little boats. Yeah, like pirate ships. Yeah, you get to ride in little pirate ships around a swirling Bugs Bunny. And now we leave the Bugs Bunny Boomtown and enter the world of the DC Super Friends. And this was done in the same year. When they did Bugs Bunny Boomtown, they also did uh, the DC Super Friends area, featuring an arcade. And this is a weird area because this is where you do enter the line for the Joker, the Joker Funhouse Coaster, which is uh, their, their main like kids roller coaster kind of thing. And I'm going to show off a little bit of that in a moment. But their, uh, their kids coaster is really cool. It's more of a family coaster and has a really, really weird layout. It's very much fit into this... Uh, it, it's an odd layout, guys. I'll show you part of it here. Like, there's the station. Then there's a lift over here. A drop, and then it goes that way. But the DC Super Friends, I like what they did here, too, because this, uh, it took up space of the park that was really not used. This part of the park, it used to be an old, I think, dolphin stadium that went unused for years and years and years. And that's one of my pet peeves in parks is when they have a an area of the park that goes unused for years. And so they got rid of that and they added uh, some flying scooters, a more kid-friendly drop tower. And then they uh, they redid this into the Joker's Funhouse. And we're gonna get some more shots of the Kitty Coaster. And normally you think Kitty Coasters, you think of something like a uh, like a wacky worm or you know SPF Visa spinning coaster and they're normally not fun rides for anyone except for toddlers whereas this this could be a fun ride for pretty much anybody it's got tunnels and drops the lines do get very long yes it is, it's a one train so lines get pretty long but uh so one to hit early in the day or later in the day now here we get to areas where I definitely think we might see some future expansion here at Six Flags Over Georgia this is Splashwater Falls and it uh it's completely dry. Okay, here comes that, the fun uh, Joker Funhouse coaster. I like the trains too. They're kind of yeah, it's very colorful. Tunnels, trains, and it's a really neat kids ride. Very unique. And you go up and over the bridge. Really fun ride. But this ride, I mean, we are here in July 12th. It's a million degrees out. And their water ride is not only not open, but it's completely dry. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the queue, which means this thing probably has not run. I have to assume it hasn't run all year. I don't think it ran last year. I want to yeah. say. I want to say. Yeah. So this is definitely somewhere where I'm definitely feeling Six Flags is going to expand. We have a couple different thoughts in our In The Loop staff chat. I know Hyde thinks that this is a future spot for a, a Wonder Woman Golden Lasso coaster like over in Texas. I, I'm not sure if they're gonna go that far of an investment yet. I'll show, show you what I think the park will do next year in a little bit when we get over there. But that's what that's what he thinks is going over there. Now we get to one of the more interesting parts of the park. It's also the shaded part. Yes, it, it's very shaded. And it also, um, I would say, kind of feels the most un-Six Flagsy. And then it feels more like your traditional theme park with the carousel on the hill. Now, as we get through one of these duller moments of the tour, Molly, how long have you been going to this park? Because you've been going longer than I have because you grew up here. Uh, 1997 was probably my first time. 97? 97. So, so um, what are some of your, do you have any favorite rides that are no longer here? Uh, I, I can't think of anything. I, the only thing that comes to mind is the Viper, which I rode nine times in a row. Here that would be a horrible idea. And then I barked. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And then uh, uh, Deja Vu, which I rode like twice because it was always closed every yes, time. Yes, Deja came. Vu had a, a terrible operating history. Those are the only rides I can think off the top of my head that are no longer here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's probably a lot more though. Those antique car rides, that's the Hanson ride. And I'm sure there's some sort of, uh, like I'm sure there's a reasoning behind that name, the Hanson ride. I'm sure it's not a tribute to the late 90s pop band of, <laughs> as i'm assuming the ride is much older than all of the hansen brothers even at their adult ages where they play nothing but epcot nowadays and sell their beer that beer is good yeah the beer is good pops. yeah their music was terrible but they make a good beer can, can tell me what this <laughs> all right molly is giving directions and i am heading up the hill um, so this again, when I talk about how it feels un Six Flagsy, like, first of all, it's a weird location because it's up on the top of a hill. 
And you got a couple different rides up here. On the left, you got a family balloon ride. On the right, you have a rocking tug. And then the Hanson cars, you can enter them over here. Now, one thing I don't like about the Hanson cars right now, they're not running a lot of the antique autos, which makes the line very, very long. Also, not really one of the better antique car rides either, as it's uh, not too long. You don't go past anything all that cool. Now, the real reason to come up here, I'm going to show you, and that's uh, where it dead ends up here, and that is the Riverview Carousel. The Riverview Carousel, it's the oldest ride in the park. It's actually one of the oldest rides in any park, to be honest. This is a carousel that was originally built in 1908 up in uh, the Riverview Park that was in Chicago for a while. And it's, it's a really, it's beautiful too. Like I wouldn't say I'm not a carousel guy, but when I'm here, I try to ride this one just because I think it's cool to ride a ride that's 110 years old. And you can see some stuff. It's on the uh, National Register of Historic Places. All sorts of information about the carousel right here. We'll say some of the horses are sort of not in the best of shape. But again, you expect that with a ride that's so old. And little stuff like that, like that three bench. It's just so neat. And I don't blame them for some of the horses not being in good shape because it's so old. And also to uh, to do some of these horses and you know repaint and, and refurbish and stuff like that would cost well, well more than it is worth to Six Flags. But yeah, um, if you're coming to the park, and I also love this, you know, just the, uh, the rocking chairs and the shade. Come over there, hang out, relax. And now the one, the one problem about this area of the park, this uphill area where these rides and the carousel is, it's kind of a dead end. Molly, you are done giving directions now. I am, I am. Look at you. I did forget Georgia Cyclo is no longer here either. Yes, Georgia Cyclo, <laughs> it's sort of here. <laughs> Um, so that, that's the one slight issue with this this area of the park. One is it's a dead end and it's also kind of a hill to get up here. But uh, we were talking about things for kids to do and the little ones. Um, while this is not technically a kids section, it's like a family rides area and, and your little ones could go on all the rides in this section of the park. It is uh, off in the middle of nowhere. It really is. I it's, feel like a lot of people don't come up here. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Uh, it's easily, easily bypassed. Mm -hmm. I also think uh, this park is open for a uh, holiday in the park, which is their Christmas time event. And I think they do some really cool lighting effects and stuff up here. Uh, also love if you come during Halloween, during Fright Fest, they put like these, these adorable kind of like pop-up books about this ghost family that you pass while riding the antique autos. So that's uh, pretty cute as well. Now we are going to exit the, uh, the very nice and un-Six Flagsy Riverview Carousel area and enter the very, very Six Flagsy Metropolis area. But this area of the park, it's also pretty cool. I mean, this is home to one of the best rides in the park. It's home to the Justice League Battle for Metropolis, which is the park's indoor shooting interactive 3D dark ride. It's a ride that opened last year. I believe it was 2017 ed edition, and it's fantastic. I love it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dark ride guy. Like we. Uh, me and Molly, we live in Orlando, so we get to go to Disney World and Universal Studios all the time. And this is a ride that could easily fit in at a Universal Studios park. In fact, it's considerably better than things they've been building lately. Fast and the Furious, Jimmy Fallon, that kind of stuff. Now, uh, is it time for a drink refill? Mm. Do you know what? We're going to stop, get the drink for your refill real quick, and we'll be meet you back right here in Metropolis. Yeah. After a much needed soda break, we are back, getting ready to roll. Uh, another Coke Freestyle machine over here at the wonderfully named Munchopolis Food Court. Also, one questionable thing. They say they have loaded fries, but their loaded fries are fried with cheese and chili. No bacon. No bacon. They are not. Those are not loaded fries, Six Flags Over Georgia. Those are chili cheese fries. I do like filling up our drinks there because it's three different places that you can go to yeah. on the line. Now enough about sodas, let's talk about roller coasters. Superman Ultimate Flight is the park's flying roller coaster. It was uh, one of the original B&M flying roller coasters. And while this layout's been cloned a couple of times, like this same exact ride can be found at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey, as well as Six Flags Great America in Chicago, it was designed for this park and has worked into that hilly landscape. So it's definitely a little bit of a different experience riding this ride here than it is a great adventure. The line gets long though sometimes. Yes, the line does get kind of long. It's as one it, of the longest ones in the park. As it is a flying roller coaster. So uh, 
they don't, they don't tend to lend themselves to having great capacity and things like that. But it's a fun ride. If, you, if you've never been on a flying roller coaster, it's uh, definitely worth your time. The pretzel loop element there is uh, one of the most intense things that you'll find on any roller coaster. And also, it was one of the one of the first flying coasters. That's kind of a trend that is no longer no longer a big deal. Like there has not been a new flying roller coaster in this country in almost ten years, I think. Ow. I think it was Manta was the last one. The last good one. I know, like the those Luna Park built that that horrible one in Coney Island. Now, over here on the right is the entrance to Six Flags Hurricane Harbor. That is the uh, the free with admission water park here in the park. Not a very large water park. It's got that. Okay, well now you can't hear me at all. Anyway, uh, big one roller coaster over here. That's a Great American Scream Machine. Very pretty. Goes right next to a lake. You got the big pay extra sky coaster right here. Um, have not been on the Scream Machine yet this year. It did get new trains. So what they did, they took the the trains with the individual ratcheting lap bars from the old Georgia Cyclone and they put them on this. Uh, from what people have told me, it has made the ride not so great. Ooh, it was already rough to begin with. Yeah. Too. Also love the, uh, the this picture here for a sky coaster of uh, <laughs> a hang gliding Yosemite Sam. Oh, they are running the train. That must be the one that did not catch on fire. Good for them. <laughs> it's also very short. That's like the shortest train I've ever seen in a theme park. <laughs> Whole bunch of games over here. Uh, this is like your main games area of the park. There's some over by Goliath too, but I think there's a better selection of games over here in Metropolis. Uh, talk a little bit more about that water park. Not a whole lot to that water park. It had that big giant Skull Island splash pad area. And that was actually there before they went full blown out water park. Besides that, they have, I think it's one slide structure with a couple different slides coming off of it and then uh, a wave pool. So there's not a whole lot back there. I do like the, uh, the logo for the Metropolis section of the park. That's kind of snazzy. Also, the, uh, the continual noise of an airplane is, is kind of freaky. Um, I, I've never been to the Hurricane Harbor water park. I'm not a big water park guy. Also, I, I hate when the, the theme parks do something like this where they put the paid with admission, like you, it's just free to get into the water park if you got a Six Flags ticket or pass, but it's all the way in the back of the park, so you gotta dredge all your stuff all the way to the back of the park. I, I, I don't like when they do that. I like when it's, if they have one of these, I like when it's right in the front of the park. Up next is the entrance to Blue Hawk. The former Ninja, a couple years ago, got a paint job, got some new trains, went from a terrible roller coaster to a pretty fun ride. Uh, I, I would never go on Ninja. It would be an instant headache every Oh yeah, every it was time. an instant headache. And now it's, uh, it's awesome. We rode, uh, we rode in the front row earlier. And uh, the, the new restraints, it's got the new soft bed style restraints. And that makes a world of difference. Also the ride, I'll show you in a minute once we get over there, but it's a really pretty ride. It's over the lake. It's got a lot of really cool head chopper elements. You can see again, there's the, uh, some of the cars and the, uh, the carousel up there on the hill. If you could get past the blasting Katy Perry music. And I, I do love some of the prizes for this game over here. Who would not want a Batman or Superman penguin? I mean, that's, that's just adorable. That, I mean, we all know that penguins are the, the greatest animal in all of time and space. Six Flags Over Georgia is home to not one, but two of these ivy color covered walkways. And this one's actually in really good shape. Like some of the times you go to the parks and these are all uh, dead or, or beat up. This one's in really, really good shape. It's needed too though. Yeah, you do need the shade. On my left here, that sky scream of the park's star flyer ride. 220 or so feet tall. And it's a fun ride. You know, the, the Star Flyer is good. A lot of them kind of give me the heebie jeebies because uh, it's very high and you're, you're pretty much out there. Completely safe, but gives you the heebie jeebies. Now I get a, a chance to show you what I was talking about how uh, Blue Hawk is a really, really pretty ride. I mean, check out that. that that's an awesome looking roller coaster. I, I love the paint scheme too, that the blue and uh, gray. Yeah, it looks really pretty. Mm -hmm. This was the one on the vacation. Yes, this was the Velociraptor in the, the newer vacation movie. And there it goes. Uh, not the most interesting layout, but uh, it is uh, definitely uh, worth your time. I am not one to not miss. It's way better than it used to be. Oh yeah, way better. All right. Also, Skystreamer does not have one of the cooler cycles you'll find. You just go up, spin around on the top, and come back down. Sometimes with the smaller ones, you'll go up and down and up and down. It'll be a good time. 
You also don't feel like you're very high since you're right Yeah, you're right next to the hill. Like some of them you get a crazy sense of height. Also, it's one of the smaller ones. Some of them are like 400 feet tall. This one's like 200 feet tall. Now, is this the uh, the Lick Skillet section of the park? Yes. Because every park See. needs... Yes. <laughs> every park needs a fake frontier land. And here we are in Six Flags Over Georgia's frontier land. Ah, uh, the show just got over. Ah, uh, the What's show up? just got over. They do a, 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 a comedy gunfighting show. Which uh, we saw one during Halloween. It was, it was uh, enjoyable. Yeah, it's decent. Yes. And uh, I, I like I like comedy shows in parks. If I can laugh, then I'm good. I also like cheesy uh, Old West shows. So this, this ticks two different buckets for me. You've got another area here where you could get the... It's interesting because like that picture doesn't even make that burger look good. Like it, they, they didn't even try. Like you could definitely do some photo magic and make that look like a better burger. If you're here all day, it doesn't matter what. That's true. What uh, the burger looks like, you uh -huh. just need to eat. Yep. They do have a uh, Six Flags Mercantile over here, big shop, lots of Six Flags stuff. We'll say Six Flags didn't. I'm a big coaster guy. We travel all over the country doing roller coaster and theme park stuff. Six Flags parks in general have really, really bad merchandise as far as coaster shirts go. This is where the sky bucket ends. Yes, this is where that sky bucket takes you. So we went the long way. There's a much shorter way to get back. Yeah, you could go, because uh, the sky bucket is only like, I think it only has two supports. So it's yeah. really like an up and down. Yeah. Now, I was talking about where Hyde thought the park is going to expand next. I want to show you where I think the park is going to expand next. Um, on the left over here is Thunder River, which is the park's big river rapids ride. We'll show you a little bit more of that in a minute, but this is where you would enter for that. Also, there's an upcharge go-karts over here. Now, this is where I think the park is going to expand. This area, it's kind of like a cursed area of the park. This, this used to be home to Deja Vu at one point, and then it was Thomastown, and now it's absolutely nothing. So what I think they're going to do, I think they're going to put one of those SNS 4D free spin Joker coasters and put it right here. Obviously, they'll have to name it something else because they already have two different roller coasters themed to Joker, or two different rides themed to Joker. Their Larson Loop is not a roller coaster, but uh, <laughs> they do have two different rides themed to the Joker already. So they'll, maybe they'll call it Wonder Woman or something like that. I do like the entrance to Thunder River with the uh, big stone kind of thing. You guys probably know that I am not a big fan of uh, drenching water rides, so I have never been on Thunder River. So I cannot really give you an honest review. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, like, I'm not a big one either, so I'm probably not the right one to uh, okay. give a review. Uh, it has some cool effects, but nothing amazing. Yeah. Like, it's not that pretty. No. So we're kind of circling back past some things we already saw, like the, uh, the, the just uh, this DC Super Friends area is over there on the left. So we're, we're not going to pass by that, but we're going to take a little bit of a different route because we're coming up on one of my favorite rides in the park. I think it is my favorite ride in the park. And it'll be on... Not mixed. I can't go to uh, this park and not ride it. Yes, and that's going to be at the top of this hill over here. One thing about uh, Six Flags Over Georgia, there is a couple of hills and some hilly terrain. So uh, if your dad pushing the stroller or you're uh, traveling with a loved one that's in a wheelchair, you know, get ready to help them out because uh, there are definitely some steep inclines here at the park. Hey, if you didn't didn't get enough of that crappy Six Flags pizza in the front of the park, well, they've got you covered back here. Third one. <laughs> third one. And this is the third one? Third one. See, at this point, that sky ride that we were making fun of doesn't seem like such a bad idea because it takes you up the hill. Yeah, but if you're walking from the front to the back, you're all down there. Yeah, that's true. So that's another good pro tip. If you want to ride the sky ride, ride from the back of the park to the front of the park. Yes. But here it is. And it's all here it is, cool. the crown jewel of Six Flags Over Georgia. And this is the Monster Mansion indoor dark ride. And it's wonderful. It is definitely on par with like a Disney or Universal. Like an older Disney ride. Yeah. Like, or like something universal, like it's very much on par with like an E.T. adventure. Oh yeah. It's so cool. Uh, it was actually in really good shape too. Yeah. All the animatronics were pretty much working. Uh, they, like some of them you definitely hear the clicks and sounds like that. Yeah. Uh, some other effects that weren't so great, some audio not working in parts, but uh... Overall in pretty good shape. 
Yeah, for Six Flags. Um, this, is, this is my favorite ride in the park. It's a, uh, and it's just because it's also it's very unique. Like, yeah. um, I could go to a lot of parks that'll have like a roller coaster like Goliath, or a lot of parks have a, a roller coaster like Twisted Cyclone. It's really hard to find a ride anywhere like the Monster Mansion. And there's a bunch of animatronics. There's it's not tons just of animatronics. Then you have a candy shop that used yeah. to be. Yeah, that when this uh, when they redid uh, Monster Mansion, uh, Monster Mansion used to be known as Monster Plantation. Then they fixed it up, changed the name to make it more PC, and with the upgrades, um, they they changed the name. They also changed the different sections of the park too. Other over time, like. I believe Lick Skillet used to be known as the Confederacy. Yes, it did. And yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the <laughs> it's the South, but that's still probably okay. <laughs> now over here, some interesting stuff. Another one. This is another great place to go and get your Coke refilled. One is kind of off the beaten path, and uh, it also has freestyle machines, so you can get a good selection. This guy here is uh, mostly used for haunts. It's like a walkthrough haunt area. But I want to go down here because not only is this a good place to get our Coke refilled once again, and I could take a break as I've been talking for like a half an hour, and that takes a real toll on my throat, but it also gives you a good view of that Thunder Rapids ride. We saw the entrance, the cool rockwork entrance. Well, let's go show off the ride itself, which is a big, uh, your traditional Canyon River Rapids style ride. And uh, I also love that this sort of alcove shows it off. And as you can see from this area, it's definitely a, a pretty ride. Yeah, this is the only section that's really pretty, though, yeah. in my opinion. But, I mean, it definitely works. It'd be nice if a boat went by, but there's no boats going by. So, do you know what? I'm going to get a soda, and we'll catch back up for you. After another soda break, we're back, and these guys, they're ready. And Molly's about to show off one of the simple joys in the park. We've got a whole bunch of people. They paid, uh, it's 50 cents to get some, to, to get a token, and you get to blast them. And you get to blast them. Oh, man. oh yeah, look at that. Molly shot her slay. All right, but that, that's one of those uh, like simple joys of the amusement park. Also, hey, if you're Hyde, our, our in the resident lover of fanny packs, there's one for you. There you go, there, there's one for you to pick up right there. All righty, so let's continue on with the tour. <laughs> I think, I think that. The, the water gun is that dad, his favorite part of the whole park. I think so too. He gave me the token. <laughs> he gave you the token. He yells at every boat that comes by yep. and then blasts them. Yeah, this is one of my favorite places to eat. Yes, this park. Uh, I don't normally recommend eating at a Six Flags, no. but if you're here all day or if you have like the annual pass dining plan, this is our, my favorite. I agree with you. Yeah, definitely. The Macho Nacho Burritos. It's kind of like a, like a Chipotle kind of place. Mm -hmm. And uh, portion size is pretty good. Like you probably eat there once in the middle of the day, it'll fill you up. The other train station, right over here, is where we'll go. Yes, so uh, two different train stations. And it's kind of interesting. One thing I love. Are you in your video? You're in my video. Hey. You got anything to plug? Uh, no. Nah. He's got nothing to plug, but he wants to be in the video. All right. <laughs> uh, Two things, stations. things to do. Uh, if you see us in the park, come up and say hello. Things not to do. Please don't interrupt the video. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Uh, but yeah, and I love what they do for haunt too. They they like they theme up their train and they do like interactive characters on the train. And there's like a mini haunt at the end of the train. So I, I thought that was really cool. Now we're coming up to uh, the part of the park that feels the most Six Flagsy out of anything, as it's nothing but blacktop. But it has my favorite roller coaster. Park. Yeah, this is where you would get on Goliath, 200 foot tall B&M hyper coaster, and it, it's got a really cool layout because it goes like outside the realm of the park and goes to play like in the parking lot area. Now you get on Goliath back there. There's also some construction going on back there in what used to be like the Goliath extended queue, and I'm thinking that's probably for a new, uh, new something to do with Haunt. Also, this is the other games area of the park. Now, I've been to a bunch of Six Flags parks this year, and I love that they're all doing this now. You can purchase a game play for uh, 20 bucks, and it comes with $50 worth of games. Like, I would not really be a big fan of spending five bucks on a game, but for that, that's a really good deal. 
Would you ever say Goliath is getting a little bit rougher? Yeah, there, there was a super smooth. There, there was a little bit of a rattle in the trains. Mm -hmm. But still, my favorite roller coaster in the park. Yeah, for me, it's very, very close. I'm not sure if I like that better than Twisted Cyclone, or if I like Twisted Cyclone better than that. It's very, very close. You have the barbecue uh, place, and you can Daddy O's. Your, uh, I believe it doesn't open until 11:30. But usually they open up the doors at 11 for you to refill your drinks. Yep, more ices over here. Now dead ahead of us is Daredevil Dive Coaster. And this is a, a neat ride. It's actually kind of a unique ride too. It's a, a Gerstlauer Eurofighter, but unlike most Gerstlauer Eurofighters, where it's two rows of four, this is a uh, three rows of two, and you're in adorable little rocket shaped cars. Um, there's also some like cheesy theming elements over there. And I do like that too. But uh, Daredevil Dive, highly, uh, highly recommend. Also, this is another ride. Try to ride this guide early as the capacity is just not there. There's a the cool train going right there. So what I would recommend doing is uh, getting here that half hour before opening and going right to uh, obviously, hopefully the Twisted Cyclone opens right on time, with that half hour early, and then making this, taking a beeline over here to Daredevil Dive when that opens at the park at 10.30. Definitely the lowest capacity rides. Yeah. Or the slowest dispatches. Yeah. Now we are going down the hill here, which is a happy part. I don't want to come back up the hill, but we will have to do that. As we're heading into Gotham City, which is, uh, again, home to uh, some more rides and stuff in the, the park over here. This used to be the run. Like, everyone used to run, like, way back in 97. Yeah. This is where everyone ran to. Yes, nowadays it is uh, not. Empty. Not the case. All right. You got a little tunnel over here again for, uh, this is not for the train, this is for a... Uh, like employee access road kind of things. And we make our way into Gotham City. Again, Gotham City, there's a, there's like no shade in Gotham City. Bruce Wayne needs to really get on that. <laughs> <laughs> when the public works is not so hot. Well, uh, you do have a Larson Looper though. Larson Looper. Over here, the Joker. I, I do love Six Flags' attempt of theming. How should we theme our flat ride? I just just throw that behind it. Should we make it like the size of the ride? Nah, not at all. Larson Looper just goes up, goes around. That's it. They do a really cool. I like the Gotham City Crime Wave. It's a really pretty uh, wave swinger flat ride. Gotham City might be my least favorite part of the park. Like this whole section where Goliath is and then where Gotham City is. It's Definitely on the ugly side. Now the only the other place I could definitely see them expanding Six Flags Over Georgia is over here. This is the old Batman stunt arena that has not been used for shows in I don't even know 20 years, 15 but it's years. Haunt? Yeah, they do it use it during haunt. haunt time. Now the star and up oh, there's the that was terrifying. All right, so the star attraction over here for uh, most coaster fans is what you board over here on the left, and that is the Mind Bender. <laughs> Go past the bat the Batmobile. It's a Schwarzkopf. I think it's got uh, three loops. It, it's designed to some of the hillside. There's a, a cool waterfall. And uh, one thing I like that Six Flags Over Georgia does well is looping roller coasters with only a lap bar. And both Daredevil Dive and Mindbender have only lap bars. So that is where you get on the wonderful Mindbender roller coaster. You can see it over there. Also, uh, a couple of games over here. There goes Mindbender. We've not been on Mindbender. It did not open on time, so we that's one ride we have not been on yet on this trip, at least. Also, Gotham City, it's a dead end. And, like, a dead end, like, worse than the uh, the one with the, the carousel on top. Because you have to go up the hill. Yeah, you gotta go up the hill coming no back. <laughs> yes, and then at the back of Gotham City here is Batman the Ride, which is the big blue B&M inverted roller coaster. Fun ride. Uh, I think I've been on four or five of them this year alone with all my travels. Now, do you know what? Instead of doubling back and walking up the hill and taking you through that exhaustion, I'm gonna jump and cut right back into that Goliath and Daredevil dive area to finish off the tour. Just give you an update, that hill coming back, not fun. Not fun at all. 
I want to get a shot of this ride because it's got a kind of a unique layout and it's just a cool fun little ride. Also something I wanted to show off, I love this, a couple of rides have these. A fruit roll up height stand. But there's a daredevil dive. Now I don't, I don't think they run shows over here this year. Sometimes they might do it during like Fright Fest or uh, like special events. Uh, this line's always really, really crowded to fill up your sports bottle. Yes, this is one of the worst places to fill up your sports bottle. Here at this uh, dip and dot flight school kind of thing. Now here is another place I would eat because it's indoors. You can yes. eat inside. Wait, so inside eat eating really helps? The food not so great. No. However, it's indoors and that adds luck. Yes. We are here during a special event. It is uh, Wyndham Rewards Member Day. So, uh, and Six Flags does these a couple times a year where they, they do like ERT events for um, if you like special groups. Like if you bought like a certain type of candy, you get to stay for an hour extra. Today it is uh, Wyndham Rewards members, which we travel all the time. We got Wyndham Rewards. Get an hour of uh, ERT after close on Screen Machine, Superman, and Justice League. Over here is a, a haunted house used for Fright Fest. I think it was like Dr. Freakoriums. It's something in 3D. Uh, it was not very good. Wasn't I would, there a swinging ship right there way back when? Um, I don't know. I, I know this area. I mean, have been, used this to is be where. Something, I just can't remember what um, it was. I know this section of the park was home to free fall, and it was home to like an indoor scrambler okay, at one point. Maybe, yeah, maybe I that's think it was called thinking. Shake Rattle and Roll. Yeah, shake Rattle and Roll. Yep, no, you're right. I'm wrong. <laughs> you heard that, Internet. <laughs> the man. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> We have that on camera. It's evidence. It is. Of course, somebody in the comments section will probably say that you were right. There was a swinging ship there. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think you were right. Oh, I did like that. Like, another one of the, my favorite like old rides that this park had was uh, where Goliath is now. I think they used to have, uh, I think they had a parachute drop ride. Yes, they did. And I think they had a little plane ride as well. Like, like a spinning plane ride. I want to say it was over there. I might be confused, but uh, the parachute drops are cool rides. Not many of those left. I know the one, at, I love going on the one at Great Adventure. That's the only one that I can think photobomb. of. You photobomb. <laughs> All right. As we uh, continue to move along the tour, we're almost done. One with a lot of shade. Yes, shade, big right. plus. Six Flags Railroad crosses right overhead over here. Now, another thing that I'm pretty sure is new for 2018 is they've redone this stand over here, which is closed anyway. But now it sells Frozen Powerade. And man, on a hot day like this, a Frozen Powerade sounds amazing. I would love to have a Frozen Powerade. This guy here, this would be the entrance to the Georgia Scorcher. Put your feet to the fire. Also, I love the sign for Georgia Scorcher. That, that is wonderful. Can't really get a good shot of it. It's that yellow roller coaster over there. It's the park's stand-up roller coaster. And uh, I know you hate stand-up roller coasters. I, I actually like this stand-up roller coaster. It's one of the better ones, but yeah. there's no good stand-up roller coaster. Well, I mean, it's still, it's a lot better than, uh, the one I hate is Carowinds one. Yeah, yeah. That Log Jamboree, unfortunately, closed today. That's off in the back over there. It's the park's, it's a smaller, older log flume, but it combines two of Molly's favorite things, log rides and jamborees. And we are now uh, more Katy Perry music. <laughs> That's one thing about this park, they don't really do theme music in uh, the sections, except for, I guess, in that Superman section a little bit, which is uh, something they could work on. There's a better view of uh, the rest of the Goliath. Yes, as you can see how Goliath goes like outside the park and does this crazy helix over there. That's one of my favorite parts of the ride, some giant hills too. And this is where Goliath comes back into the park. Like Goliath's an awesome ride, and I think a lot of it's due to that weird layout. Like some of them, like like something like Mako at SeaWorld, it has such a generic layout, or like Intimidator at Carowinds. Like this does not have a boring layout. Like that is super fun. All right, and that'll do it. We made it. I think Molly's ready to kill me as I have now uh, made her walk the entire park sweating. In a hundred degree weather. In the middle of the day. <laughs> but nobody passed out, so we're all the better. Uh, guys, uh, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this style of video. You know, uh, especially at the parks like Six Flags Over Georgia, when you come here, like we come here almost every year, and Drew the Intern comes here, Hyde comes here, 
we can't shoot the same video every time, so we gotta try some stuff new from time to time. So I wanna know what you think about this full park walkthrough. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you tune off three minutes in and never even heard this part? Let us know what you thought of it. Thank you for watching. Any questions or comments about Six Flags Over Georgia, let me know in the comments section below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And we are now heading out of the park. We had a good morning here. We're gonna go, um, go to our favorite Atlanta restaurant, Vortex Burger. Yes. If you're in Atlanta, that is like, it's, it's one of my favorite restaurants to go to when we travel. And then we're gonna go check out the Sweetwater Brewery. Then we're gonna come back. Thanks for watching, guys.